¿no? Um, your photography. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Just ask the question. Your photography. Your maid. You know, people, I don't know why mm-hmm. at once I made is like the thing. So your maid and, you know, have made you attract fake friends. Oh, even even like the girls. You can find no girls, actually. <laughs> yeah, the girls don't want to tell me that. <laughs> so, the, the I don't girl. want to claim. Okay. Oh. So what's up guys, it's your boy Peter here and welcome back to my channel and uh, in this video switching something, switching things a little bit up today and uh, I have a guest on my channel, this is Faith Luinda Faith? Yes, um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm Faith Luinda um, Yeah, I have a podcast um, which is uh, found on the app Anchor So basically today we're going to have a discussion based on self-discovery and yeah I would like you guys to check out his video and my podcast as soon as we're done. Yeah, we're going to talk about self-discovery, how I kind of like discovered myself as pissed out. So let's get right into it. Welcome to my podcast. Um, today we're having a guest, uh, Peter Lungu. Um, so far, he's had an interesting journey in life. And I would like you guys to hear his story and maybe it would inspire you and me so yeah hello guys uh so my name's uh peter lungu and uh thank you for having me on your podcast faith so today we're talking about self-discovery kind of like how i kind of discovered who i am and i'm still discovering who i am and uh so it's like an interview face gonna ask me some questions and uh i'll reply and hope hope won't bore you to death so yeah okay so how did you decide to change your old self and maintain that drive to always improve? Okay, so basically growing up as a child, um, I was this chubby kid who literally was shy, had low self-esteem, couldn't really approach people. I was kind of like an introvert. So I I like made a decision like after high school. I'm like, okay, I have to change something about myself. I have to like... Like, there's more to life than just caging yourself in a small cave. So, I feel what I experienced growing up, the bullying, um, people laughing at me, and be, not being able to really do what I want to because I'm scared of what people talk about, is what really made me start to discover who I am, really. Yeah. Okay, how did you handle your bullying? Because right now, there are so many people... Even in our age group yeah. who experience yeah the bullying on you know, social media, like when you post a picture, people make fun of you. Yeah. How do you just live your life? Because we've seen you have a person who posts without really caring, despite you knowing you might receive negative, you know, comments. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the first thing to defeating um what comes with bullying is not really caring about what people think or let me say not not really getting your validation from people if people validate you you're like a slave under their validation so you can't really do anything because you will always be worried about what people will think what people will say about you obviously you can't go post a naked picture on instagram and yeah you care about what people think but like the certain things of um if you really want to do something and if you doing it uh, gets you right because you're like, okay, what do people think? People judge me like that. If you place your validation in people, that's I think that's the that's the only way bullying defeats you because you can't really do anything and you it really keep hurting you inside. So basically, just not caring about what people say and uh, doing stuff because you want to do it. True. Sure. How did you feel like um, when you have, you know, your old self with the bullying? Did you belo- feel like you belonged? Okay, you know, like how was that feeling? No, but trust me, bullying, bullying hurts. Like, <laughs> you, you get, no one wants to be the guy being bullied in class. Everyone wants to be the cool guy. Did you have any relationship by then a romantic relationship no i wouldn't have a romantic relationship i was an introvert i didn't really think i was good enough and uh yeah the only relationship i had was my 
me and my books basically and the, the few friends i had okay right now you are you actually talking to an introvert so how do you manage to come out from that zone um because for me i think it's a personality type it's either an introvert or an, or an extrovert, extrovert. And yeah, as an introvert, yeah, people say I'm an introvert, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, as an introvert, it's actually very hard to find people who really relate to you. That's mm. a fact. It's only a few, you know, people. But yourself, how did you manage to come out and, you know, just be yourself? Because it's quite hard because, you know, Maybe even as an introvert, before you start a conversation, yeah, you have to practice before you talk to that person. Yeah, true. And I hate phone calls. Uh, I would prefer, you know, texting. a message. Yeah. So, yeah, how did you become this extrovert? Because from the time I met you in first year, I've always known you to be an extrovert. I'm really shocked you're saying you experienced this bullying and the like, like, what? It shocked me. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Basically, I think it goes with practice. I'll give you an example. I used to be really scared of talking to girls. I wouldn't really approach a girl and just say hi. I would really pee in my pants. So I think it just goes with practice. Let's say today you wake up and I say, and then you go like, okay, I'm going to say hi to any girl I find in the street or in the mall or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you, you go say hi. First, you'll be scared to do it. Then you find yourself doing it. So the more I feel the more you engage into conversation with people, the more you become more social. I'm not really an extrovert, but I'm like a social introvert. If I know you, I'll, I'll be social with you. If I don't know you, I'll first try to play it cool. Then if at all we spark a conversation and uh, we get to know each other, then we'll, we'll get to talk. I also didn't like phone calls, mm -hmm. but I just think the more you do something, it just becomes part of you. And you just have to like, you just have to like man up and be like, okay, no, let me, let me just go for this. And just the other thing I used to tell myself is, let me just do it. As long as I won't die, it's, it's cool. It's chill. Yeah. Then I guess, yeah, I think I'll pick one or two things from what yeah, you, you said. should. Because being really engaging with people really opens a lot of doors for you. Because like certain of the things I've achieved, it's just, um, it's because of who I knew. The relationship I had with someone, I talked to this guy, and then they knew what I do, I knew what I do. And then it, it opened up some stuff that really... Yeah, good good stuff. All right. How how to maintain your drive? Like every day in the morning when you wake up. Okay, because most people are the talkers, not the doers. Yeah, true. So how do you become a doer hmm. and maintain? Because, ah, there are so many projects maybe I wanted to start or something, but you know that thing where you get that zeal, then it's not happening, man. Yeah, or true. when you tell people, about the idea, especially when it's not in the process. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's uh, bad energies or what. Mm -hmm. it, you find it's not happening. Mm -hmm. But how do you, like, Peter Lungo wakes up in the morning and says, okay, I have to do this, get this done. How do you maintain and do it? Okay. Um, basically, for me, what keeps me moving is working out. Um, from the time I started, like, going to the gym, working out, it's, I can say working out really helps each and every aspect of your life because mm -hmm. just for you to go to the gym and actually lift weights or do push-ups or just run there's always that negative attitude coming from your brain and yeah, like no let me just sleep or let me just yeah but that, if, if you just cross uh, that line of okay i've done i've woken up i've gone to the gym and i'm actually doing the thing i'm actually doing the reps i think that really motivates you to do it's, it's the same thing it's the same thing in school it's the same thing with work mm -hmm. you really don't want to do it but if you just start doing it and then you achieve it at the end of the day when you're done, it's that first morning workout for me that makes me say, okay, I've won the day. If I can wake up at five or six, do a workout for like 20 minutes and mm -hmm. I'm done, I've successfully done it. I think studying won't be a problem. Doing whatever I want to do won't be a problem because I've already won something. So I'm trying to like keep the victory going. For me, that's, I think that's what drives me. True. True. Then, um, do you worry that at a certain age you have not accomplished much or do you feel like you're on track? Um, I can say, <laughs> I can say like, um, in between because like, um, I still haven't, I still haven't, I'm on like 300 and something subscribers because people want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, but, uh, okay, I still have accomplished some things because, um, um, 
I can say I am now a photographer, a videographer. I kind of like make money with that stuff. Not every day though, but mm -hmm. there are certain things that I still didn't achieve. Like my YouTube is too small, it's too growing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just ups and downs. I can't really say that I've achieved what I want at this, this age. Or I haven't, but I'm just, I'm just somewhere there. Like trying to push. And then there's school as well. You have to. Oh yeah, how do yeah. you even find your balance? Because yeah. Yeah, how do you find your balance? <laughs> because, yeah, guys, I think us who have been locked out of uni. <laughs> you, if you're from, yeah, the University of Zambia, there's a situation, yeah, where apparently some have been chosen to stay home. So I guess you have some time. But you, yeah, what, how are you managing? Or you just actually put everything aside and just concentrate on school? Okay, to be honest, this year... <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I've put some of the things aside, but I think if you can master your time, you can do mm. anything. Quite right, school is hard. Like, it's it's really hard. Like, mm. this year, this year, is, I thought first year was hard, and it mm. was hard, mm. but no. Mm. Third year is, third year is wild. And we've only been learning for like two to three months. So I think the only, the only way to balance school and your extracurricular activities is just mm. how you manage your time. If you say, this time I'm studying, you have to make sure I study. So this time I'm shooting, you have to make sure I'm shooting. Like, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. Usually on Saturdays, I usually have gigs. I go do photography or videography. But mm -hmm. that's like a whole full day of not studying. And my friends are studying. I'm already behind. So I have to find a way of trying to do as much as I can before that Saturday. But it's not every Saturday I'm shooting. So I think it's just mastering your time and not procrastinating. Quite right. I don't say I don't procrastinate. Yeah. No, I do. Yeah, right. Everyone does. But, yeah, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. trying... Every day to like say, okay, if I'm studying, I'm studying. If I'm not studying, I'm, I'm shooting. Hmm. Just mastering time, basically. Yeah. Do you do things that you love or you do them to build a name? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at this, no, like, everyone, this era, we all want to be, you know, <laughs> everyone not wants, just... <laughs> everyone wants to make a brand. Like, your name should be a brand. Okay, but... Okay, but so many... Okay, no. Photography, do no, you, I, you know? I do it because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What? But, yeah, so okay, so, do you feel like, um, yeah, due to, you know, um, your photography... <laughs> <laughs> Just ask the question. Your photography... Your maid, you know, people, I don't know why yeah. at once that maid is like the thing. So your maid and, you know, have made you attract fake friends. Oh, even, even like the girls. You can find no girls, actually. Uh, yeah, the girls, they want to tell me that. <laughs> so, the, the I don't girls? want to claim okay. On, on, okay. On, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the girls. Yeah. Yeah, you can find, actually, you might think you're dating someone who's OG, but maybe it's just because of your status, you know? But anyway, in short, have you realized some fake people in the circle? Okay, I can't really say I've realized fake people, but um, mm. what I do has gotten me friends. And I don't know if all those friends are like true friends, you know what I mean? Because sometimes people people want to be a friend because of social status. Especially mm -hmm. in our generation, it's common. True, true. It's common. I mean, if I was to be on TV, I become this actor. People would want to say, I know that guy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People I never used to talk to. So I, I didn't really maintain all my friends because sometimes it's what we call jealousy. You yeah, hear people talk bad man. about you because mm. of what you are say? doing. Ivory, what? Yeah. Say it. I, I look, I'm not good at being. Okay, who, oh, so who could say it? Would be the guy behind the camera. Ivory, what? Ivory, but Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So people show ivory, but behind that, bend your back, they're talking bad about mm -hmm. you. Even though that like showing support, you know what I mean? True, true, true. Fake support. Yeah. So you mm. maintain all your friends, you get new friends, and you, you you really have to know who's true and who's not. But how how do you even tell a, a true friend and a fake friend? Because people actually hide in camouflage these days. Yeah. I think my circle is really small. So, I think don't yeah. don't trust everyone hundred percent. Mm hmm. And. I don't know. But like the people who knew me before I, I got what I have in the studio there, I think mm. I'd call those my like okay, real yeah, friends. Yeah, you yeah know? OG, OG. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's really hard, honestly. I, I can't really... It's, I think you just have to be like skeptical. Like don't trust everyone 100%. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, and then like how do you... How, how does Peter just dive into something like... What can I say? 
like you don't know the outcome mm -hmm. you don't know if it will be beneficial for you mm -hmm. but you just go for it and get it like started that's really hard even like for these guys i, I have some friends who are like um Maybe they answer a business, yeah, but yeah. you know it does that fear and just like, yeah. but you, you you just go into the unknown, like you know, mm. yeah, like how do you decide to start? Okay, and you just go for it. Okay, I think um, for example, give an example of starting a business, right? Starting a business is a risk. You don't really know if you make money or you won't make money. Mm -hmm. So I think removing fear and being optimistic, but at the same time being aware of if it goes south it can go south i think that that really helps me dig deep i'll give an example when i first got my camera i didn't really know <laughs> i didn't really know if i'll ever make money with photography mm -hmm. but like the day i made my first 150 i think that was the that was the best money i ever made yeah and then um i i kind of like lost money when i was trying to order a lens but you, it's it's not like the losses that kept me moving, but it's the small wins that really keep you going. Yeah. So I think just be accepting that business is a risk, or whatever you do is a risk, and it's possible that it might not work out. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, you stop it and try find something else. True. True. Yeah. True. And how did you find your passion, man? Because okay. I've been looking for it. I've heard to find mine. Heard to find. Okay. Um, how did you find it? I know they'll say. No, you try so many things, but I think that's true. <sighs> okay, I, so uh, okay, let, let me give you an example of what I do. I'm a videographer, mm -hmm. I'm a photographer, I have this pissed house thing. Mm -hmm. My first thing, like the first vision, the first dream I had was people used to tell me, No, you know how to dress, I like the way you dress. Like, okay, let me be a stylist and uh, style people, maybe style a celebrity and make mm -hmm. money. I did not make any money from styling, I never styled anyone. That was a flop. Mm -hmm. Then I switched. I just continued posting style or whatever on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But then I switched to photography and videography. And uh, I've only been doing it for like a year and a half. Not even, maybe a year and a few months. And uh, I can gladly say I have... My, okay, say my camera bag is worth 15000 And that stuff I've bought on my own from the same photography and videography thing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I think it's just trying out different stuff. And the best if you find a passion mm -hmm. or something that you actually enjoy doing. Oh, yeah. Because you yeah. you're doing, you don't yeah, like, it you're doing every... It becomes your life. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, have to, like, you. do it. Yeah. It's, like, it's like school. You're doing uh -huh. a course you don't love. You'll be stressed uh -huh. out the whole time. <laughs> Even if you love it, you get stressed out at school. But, but, at, but least, at least, yeah, you know, yeah, like, I'm you know doing what I mean. yeah. like. Yeah. True. Okay, so... We're now on the last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what advice, right, would you give to those people? Like, um, in short, how would I phrase this? How can you be your own unique self? Mm. Yeah, okay, deep. there are so deep. many. There are so many copies. Like, you know. Okay, and I've noticed also like originality. Like when you're just yourself, unique. Mm. It's either yeah, weird. You're not accepted, or you're just not, you know, it's like it's so what can I say? You're so brand new or different, so yeah, kind of like an outcast in society. But how would you make those people, us people, yeah, feel powerful, strong in their own unique self? Mm, that is a deep question. <laughs> Okay, it's but, from my soul. Okay, yeah, but I think it's like this. It's from my soul, I'll man. give an example. Mm. When I started posting stuff on Instagram, my first post probably had like three likes. Mm -hmm. um, looking at now, I have like 1,600, 1,005. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 1,000 something followers, right? Consistency, right? Consistency, but mm -hmm. um, I think when you start doing it, people will like make fun of you or... You'll be like an outcast, like you said. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it, people just eventually accept that that's who you are. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're feeling the thing and you're, you love doing it, I think you can just do it. And people just generally adapt to to what you're doing, I think. I think that's, that's, that's what makes being unique, unique. Yeah. Then the advice I would give people is, mm -hmm. um, if you have an idea and you want to do it, just go for it. If it didn't work out, mm -hmm. you can brush it off, find another one. 
go for it because in the end you never know what to actually get you there i because of what i have done mm-hmm. i'm not bragging i'm trying to, to put it out there because of what, I have, da- <laughs> because of what I have done <laughs> uh-huh. i have been on an ad for a phone i got mm-hmm. paid 500 just to put my my face there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i have modeled on a runway mm-hmm. i have shot like three chitangamulidos coming to like my photography mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. and that's all money like people yeah, giving true, me true. money for doing what i'm doing yeah true, true. i have shot birthday parties portraits i've made ads and all that stuff and it's really easy because in me doing that stuff i'm mm-hmm. doing what i already love to do Mm-hmm. So if you really just find something you love doing, be it dancing, be it singing, be it baking, be it whatever, mm-hmm. if you just do it and invest time in it, it will definitely flourish. And yeah, you have to invest time in it, like practice yeah. and all that stuff. And don't forget that you're a student, you're a student. True, true. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So thank you guys for watching this YouTube video. And uh, if you like videos like this, uh, comment in the comment section and we'll do more of this. And if you want to see Faith on my channel again, yeah, you can you can tell me. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys okay. for watching and uh, see you next time.